Hey everyone, it's Brian. I'd like to welcome you to my video series on complex analysis, the study of complex numbers. <music> complex numbers are also called imaginary numbers, but they're not necessarily any less real than real numbers. It's just we extend our definition of what a real number can be. So you know for real numbers that if you square root a positive number, it's positive, and you can't square root a negative number. So if you could take the square root of a negative number, what would that be like? And that's pretty much what this whole course is about. So let's introduce i, the imaginary number. And by definition, i is going to be the square root of negative 1. So if we could take the square root of negative 1, i is what it would be. Or equivalently, i squared is negative 1. And so what we could do with this is we could even see what higher powers of i are. So I already know that i squared is negative 1. What would i cubed be? Well, i cubed is the same thing as i times i squared, just using properties of exponents. And we just said i squared is negative 1. So i cubed is negative i. And I could go one step further. I could talk about i to the fourth which using properties of exponents is i squared times i squared, but we know i squared is negative one. So negative one times negative one is one. And so we have this sort of recursive relationship where i is the square root of negative one, i squared is negative one, i cubed is negative i, and i to the fourth is one. And this will sort of repeat every four times. So now I can actually talk about what a complex number is. A complex number is the form, so usually we use the letter z, equals a plus b i. So a and b are real numbers like 5, 6, 7.2, pi, negative 11 thirds, and i is that imaginary unit we just talked about. So some examples could be 3 plus 5i is a complex number. Maybe I'd have minus 0.2 minus pi i, that's a more interesting complex number. And so they all have this form, they all have a real part and an imaginary part. And we'll denote that by saying that the real part of z is equal to a, and the imaginary part of z is equal to b. So notice here the imaginary part is not b i, the imaginary part is just b. So in this example right here, the real part of 3 plus 5i would just be 3, and the imaginary part of 3 plus 5i would just be 5. And so I'll end this introduction today by saying that two complex numbers are equal if and only if their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. So here, I have two different complex numbers denoted by z1 and z2, and if z1 is equal to z2, then this has to mean that a1 is equal to a2, and also that b1 is equal to b2. And this might seem like an obvious thing, but it'll help us solve equations later and a few other things. So in this video, you learned what a complex number is. We introduced the imaginary unit i and where it comes from. We also talked about if two imaginary numbers are equal, that means their real parts are equal and their imaginary parts are equal. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Next time, we're gonna talk about regular arithmetic operations of complex numbers, like addition and subtraction, multiplication and division. So I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.